Once upon a time, there was a man named Solomon who built a mighty temple. But before long, the people of Judah turned away from God and began to worship foreign gods and idols. One day, God allowed the Babylonians to attack Judah and destroy the whole city, including God's temple. The people of Judah remained in captivity until one day, God raised up the prophet Haggai to inspire the people to get back to work, saying, the time is now. Well, welcome to Fur Road. Hope you had a uh, good 4th of July celebration. Uh, we had fun. I, I got popped in the nose by my son playing basketball in the pool. Um, so that was fun. Uh, um, and then for some reason I decided it was my job to kill flies on the 4th of July. And so I lost track after I think a couple hundred. But did anybody else have bad fly issues this year what what is going on with flies it's crazy my record was three flies in one swat though that's pretty not bad huh so we had a lot of fun you, you know we complain a lot about our country and everything that's wrong with it but with all of its issues I, I think it's still a pretty amazing place to live and, and so many people have made sacrifices so that we could live in freedom and, and we forget about that and we have freedom. We have freedom to make good choices and bad choices, but it's freedom, right? And uh, so I hope you took some time this week to consider uh, how blessed we are to live in America. Uh, you know, when famous people talk about how bad things are in America, I rarely see them moving to another country, you know. They talk about it, but they never do. So, it, it, you know, that it's, uh, there are things wrong with our country, but it's an amazing place to be. So we finished up our You Asked For It series a couple weeks ago, and, and uh, then Jordan did a great job last week, and, and today we're going to start a short series from a book of Bible that I guarantee that nobody asked for when they filled out the little sheets for the You Asked For It series. Nobody uh, probably has ever asked to talk about this book, and uh, that is the book of Haggai. And um, some pronounce it Haggai, some say Haggai. I've always heard Haggai so growing up, so that's how I'm going to say it. It's the second shortest book of the Old Testament after the book of Obadiah. It's only two chapters long, um, and, but I believe it's a, a useful book, as is all of Scripture. Remember, Second Tim or yeah, Timothy three sixteen says all Scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Uh, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And, and so I think sometimes we, we think, oh, it's the Old Testament. Uh, let, let, we kind of shy away from it because that's the Old Covenant. We're in the New Covenant now. Uh, but the truth is that without the Old, we wouldn't have the New, right? And, and so we need to not forget about it. And, and really, the whole Bible is the story, you know, from clear back to the beginning of time leading up to Jesus. And so if we don't have that background story, you know, we're missing out on so much. And so the idea behind this series came from Craig Groeschel of Light Church out of Oklahoma City. I got to hear him in person last week at the North American Christian Convention. And uh, just appreciate everything he's done for the kingdom. Uh, the version, the Bible apps that most of you use on your phone, that's from his church that they've uh, re released free to the world, basically. Uh, I think they've up to like 2.6 million people have put that app on their phone now. Um, but I believe there's some really good modern day application from this book of Haggai. And so and I, I want to talk about where you guys fit into this um, before we get into those books so we can see that, yes, this does apply to you. Here's the thing. We're all at different stages of our lives. And, and most of us can look back at this point and say, you know, things aren't quite like I expected them to be. You, you may have expected to be at a, a different stage of your career, or you may have expected to, to be in a different place financially than you are right now. You may have expected to be married, or to have kids, or, or, or to live somewhere else, or, or any number of things, okay? But, but here you are, right here today, whatever your situation is. Now, oftentimes, there, there are a whole lot of things that are out of our control, things of life, things that that just happen. We just have to deal with it. But sometimes there are things that are very much in our control 
and and God has put some things maybe out there for us to do, some doors for us to walk through, and for whatever reason, we, we kind of have not walked through those doors. And so we have kind of some unfinished business that we've never taken care of, and so we're going to look at that today. You know, what, whatever the reason, maybe it was too scary, or there, there, there was just, uh, you know, we're kind of being selfish about it, or, or maybe we got lazy uh, in our faith, or maybe it's a relation that, relationship that's holding you back. I mean, it could be a hundred different things, uh, reasons why we haven't really kind of finished the business that, that God, we know God wants us to do. In our story, the Jewish people, they're given this opportunity to begin to, to make things right with God again. Okay, after many years of doing the wrong thing, they're, they're given the chance to do the right thing. And they're just not taking advantage of the opportunity to do the right thing. They started on the right path, but then they got bogged down. So uh, let me give you just a little background to our story, and then we'll get right into it. So by this time in history, and we saw that a little bit in the, the video, the Israelites, they were long past their glory days. Okay, God's chosen people had been through many cycles of up and down, following him, not following him, and and uh, worshiping idols, worshiping other gods, and and God just didn't put up with that over time. And towards the well, let's go let's go back to to King Solomon's life. Um, during the fourth year of King Solomon's reign, he started construction of the original temple, this magnificent, incredible, incredible building. Okay, and, and uh, it, everything was going good. Um, people from all over the world would come to see this temple and, and worship this God. Uh, but towards the end of Solomon's life, he started to kind of lose his edge a little bit. The people started to turn a little bit. And when he died, um, things started to go downhill pretty quickly. Over time, God allowed a series of events to take place in order to try to pull the people's hearts back to him. In 587 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar and his army basically crushed the southern kingdom of Judah. Okay, they took the Jews into captivity and eventually destroyed this once magnificent temple. Okay, and by destroying the temple, they, they basically destroyed the identity of the Jewish people. And so they ended up being in captivity for 70 years, 20 years before the destruction of the temple and 50 years afterwards. I think we sometimes we think about that and we, we can't really put our wrap our minds around what the, what that means. I was trying to think maybe modern day what that might look like. You know, right now North Korea is in the news a lot, right? And, and we're kind of keeping an eye on them. They're testing these missiles and they say they can do all these things. So let's say North Korea did come up with the capability to, you know, nuke the U.S. and and so they said, hey, you guys need to surrender to us. Or we're going to just destroy your, your nation. And, and we, we finally said, okay, we'll do that. And, and we decide that's better to surrender than to destroy our country. And, and so we become under the control of North Korea. We're no, no longer allowed to be the United States of America anymore. We're, we're in bondage to someone else. Um, and so, you know, that might seem far-fetched. But that's kind of basically what happened to the Jewish people. Okay, they, they had a civil war, first of all, themselves. They fought against themselves. They divided the, their kingdom up into two nations. Now, another nation was taking away what's left of the, the nation that they have. And, and so this is a big deal. They no longer were a nation. Can you imagine us no longer being a nation? It's hard to picture it, but that's what happened. But then in 538 B.C., through a series of events, about 50,000 people were allowed to travel back to Jerusalem, the capital of Judah, to rebuild the temple. Okay, this is good news. They're, they're, they're allowed to go. And you can just imagine the relief and the, and the excitement that they, they get to go back and start things over again to, to rebuild their nation. And so these 50,000 people, they go back and they start building. They're doing the right things. They're, they're building the foundation for the temple. They get the foundation built. Uh, they build the altar, you know, that would be so important where the sacrifices would be made. And so they, they get this part done. And so they're progressing on this. But then their neighbors, the Samaritans, start seeing what's happening. And, and they say, hey, the, uh, this isn't good. You know, we really don't want them 
to be a nation. We don't like them to start with, and we don't want them to, to come back. And so they kind of start putting some opposition, some pressure on them. And so they stopped. Just like that. And so guess what they started doing? Instead of the, building the God's house, they started building their own houses. Okay, so for the next 14 years, they start building these really nice houses for themselves. And they decided it must not be the right time to build God's house because things got a little difficult. So that's kind of the backstory leading up to the story. For 14 years, they weren't working on God's house. They were working on their own houses. And they didn't build shabby houses. Okay, um, So God raised up the prophet Haggai to call the people back to start doing what they had been called there to do, to rebuild the temple. And so listen to what it says, Haggai chapter 1. Verse 2, if you're actually looking in your Bibles, you just kind of go to Matthew and go left a few pages. It's uh, right at the end of the Old Testament, okay? So um, third book to the end. Uh, or you can look up there on your phones or whatever. Um, so Haggai chapter 1, verse 2. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Okay, it's interesting here, I think, how God refers to the Jewish people here. He doesn't say my people, right? Like most throughout the Old Testament, this it's my people. Instead, he says, these people say. And, and that's kind of interesting. I think that means that's not a good sign, right? He's not happy. It's kind of like when one parent is with the kids and, and they do something really bad and, and then the other parent comes home and, and, and they, are, they just can't wait to talk to them. They said, you won't believe what your kids did. You ever done that? Anybody? Okay. And, and the, the parents is like, well, I was thinking they're actually our kids. and the, No, these are your kids and I want you to kill them right now. Okay. <laughs> we do that. And, but I think that's kind of what, what, what God is doing here, you know, by saying these people, he's making a statement of I am not happy with what they're doing. God says these people are trying to say this isn't the time to rebuild my house. I'm not happy about it. So, so they were willing to work on the temple as long as everything went well, went smoothly. But as soon as it stopped going smoothly, they said, I'm out. That's it. Uh, I'm going to take care of myself. Number one. We'll get back to God's house later. Or, or I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it's my kids will be the ones that they're going to work on it. And I think we do that too. Whenever we receive opposition to what we thought God maybe wanted us to do, we start giving up pretty easily. Well, I guess it must not be God's will. No. No. I, I don't think that's the case necessarily. It just got more difficult. So here's the deal. What you will find in your Christian walk is that the closer you get to doing something for God that, God, that really matters to God, the more likely you will face opposition. Okay? Please hear me on this. Satan stands up and takes notice. He, he wasn't worried about things at first. On, on this temple, it was no big deal when they just came in. They're, oh, they're doing a few little things. And all of a sudden, it looks like, hey, they're, they're accomplishing something here. I, I'm going to put a stop to this. When you face opposition to doing something that God has led you to do, it doesn't mean that God is against you. In fact, a lot of times it's a sign that you are doing exactly what God wants you to do. This is true in your personal spiritual walk. It's true as a church. If our church is always comfortable... And easy and just, oh man, we just love each other, everything's good. I, sometimes that we're missing out on some things. I think we better start watching out. I think a lot of times you, you, you we get so easy that, that Satan just says, okay, they're just doing their thing. As a minister, if I'm never facing any pushback from people, I'm probably being too safe. When we're moving forward the most, Satan is going to take notice the most. If your spiritual life is always smooth sailing, you just think, oh, man, everything is good. Are you really kind of getting out there on the edge for Jesus? And so here's my first challenge to you this morning if you're taking notes. Choose the hard right over the easy wrong. 
Choose the hard right over the easy wrong. In other words, with God's help, choose the more difficult thing that is the right thing rather than choose the easier way that is the wrong way. Choose the hard right over the easy wrong. Does that make sense? I'm saying it's very easy to quit focusing on God and, and start focusing on ourselves when we face any kind of opposition. Oh, there we go. I got to stop. You know, it's much easier when someone wrongs you to hold a grudge and be angry and not forgive them. But the difficult thing is to start working on forgiving because Christ forgave you. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. It's easier to rack up your credit card debt and worry about it later than and live above your means than to live below your means. That's the kind of thing. It's easier to, to not go out on a limb to talk about Jesus with your coworker because it makes you uncomfortable. But the difficult right thing is to spread the message of Jesus, to tell him. Tell him about this person that you know. You see, with God's help, we can choose to do the difficult right thing. And, and we're going to see that now is the time to do the, the right thing, not later. Okay? The time is now. The time is now. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. The message version says it like this. How is it that it's the right time for you to live in your fine new homes while the home, God's temple, is in ruins? basically saying how did you ever think this was a good idea what kind of selfish reasoning got you to this point you guys got derailed on what you were called to do you were called back to Jerusalem to build God's temple and now you're building your houses okay let's stop for a minute I want to have every one of you before I go into the rest of the message I want you to begin to think about what unfinished business you have from God. There's something in your life, something that, that you never started, that you knew you were probably supposed to start, something you did start and, and you stopped when it got hard. Could have been a week ago, it could have been a month ago, it could have been 14 years ago, it could have been how, however long ago. Most of us have something that we knew that God was calling us to do and we pushed that aside. You know what it is. You know, maybe you feel like you really are supposed to reach out to somebody. And you just haven't done it. Maybe there's somebody you've really wanted to invite to church, but you're just afraid they're going to say no or, or afraid they'll treat you differently. Maybe with your finances, you've wanted to start making giving back to God a priority, but you're waiting until you have everything in completely in order and just it all makes sense. And it, and it just never is going to happen. Or, or you felt like maybe you should find a place to serve at church, but you just haven't done it. Maybe you felt God calling you to, I don't know, switch jobs or, or, or move to another place. And, and you felt like this, but you just thought, no, it's too scary. I can't do that. Okay, that it's going to be something different for each of you. And so kind of start processing that. And, and with that in mind, just listen to the rest of the message through the lens of that area of unfinished business in your life maybe you need to pray about it maybe you've pushed it so far back that you don't even remember what it is so for the jewish people god says here was here's what i want you to do i want you first of all to give careful thought to your ways it's kind of like parents saying now you think about what you've done i want you to think about this you go to your room and think about this is it really time to keep building your fancy houses when god's house is incomplete now, but what in the world are they talking about paneled houses? Okay, for us, paneling is kind of the cheap 70s look now that we, we've all switched over from that. But what was it then? Uh, according to the, most of the commentaries, it was basically very high-end living. The paneled housing probably referred to walls and ceilings made out of cedar wood, which was pretty rare in that area. And so basically it'd be like you building a house now and choosing all of the upgrade options. Okay, the granite countertops, the fancy bathrooms, the, the huge walk-in closets. Okay, be picking all those things for your house. Now, I don't think God is always against us having nice things. But 
It's a big but here. He is always against us putting nice things ahead of him. Always. Okay? Which is what they were doing. Their nice houses were taking precedent over God's house. And, And so let me ask you, is there something that you are putting ahead of God? Is God getting the, the leftovers or the first fruits, the very best? He says, give careful thought to your ways. Now let's keep going. Verse 6. You've planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Here's what he's saying. You are working your tails off for yourself and it isn't getting you anywhere. Okay? You're looking for happiness in all the wrong places and you're doing all these things and you feel like you need to do this. Do you ever feel like that? Like you're a hamster just spinning in the wheel and you're just going and going and going and you think, man, I should be getting somewhere. (laughs) Poor little guys. They just never go anywhere, do they? Olivia had a hamster this year for a class, and I think it was retarded. Or, or, <laughs> that's not the politically correct word. I'm sorry. What am I supposed to say? It was not smart. Okay, there we go. It was not a smart hamster. But normally we 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 get in life, and we're spinning and spinning and spinning, and and we think, man, I just I got to work this extra job, and I got to have all these activities for my kids, and we got to do these things. Dr. Phil, you ever hear him say this? He says, well, how's that going for you? It's, it's not, doesn't do you anywhere. It doesn't get you anywhere. And it wasn't getting these people anywhere. So God gives them instructions on what to do. Verse 7. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber. and and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. He repeats that same phrase again. So you know it's got to be important. He says, what did he say? Give careful thought to your ways. And so you're thinking, he's saying again, you guys need to think about what you're doing. And then when you've thought about it, here's what you're going to do. Keep it simple. It says three things. Go to the mountain, bring down the timber, build my house. I love this. They, they felt this opposition, so they've stopped what they're doing. And, and, and God brings along Haggai and, and he tells them, okay, consider what they've been doing. Okay, think about this. And then he gives them very simple instructions. This is how you're going to get back on your path. You're just going to go to the mountain. You're going to bring down the timber and you're going to build my house. But, but wait, what about the opposition? And, and it's kind of a long way up, up the mountain. And, and so how, what's this going to look like? Don't, don't we need some more details? Go to the mountain. Bring down the timber. Build my house. It's telling them, you know, guys, this isn't rocket science. You don't need all the details. I have the details figured out. So often we think we need to have it all laid out right there in front of us. And then we'll, then we'll do it. Go to the mountain, bring down the timber, build my house. We have to remember that there's this thing called faith, right? Hebrews 11.1. 1, now faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Faith is all about being certain that, that God is in control. Okay, It's not about having it all figured out. If, the, if it is a God thing, you can be assured that He has the details figured out. And if you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to do something, you just need to step through the door and say, Okay, here I am. I'm ready. Use me. Stop worrying about it. Just start going up the mountain. Let God use you. Be faithful to God today and He'll show you the way to go. He'll work out the details. You know, Isaac and Karen, they've been planning to go to the mission field for, for a long time. And they've planned and planned. And, and they think they have it all figured out. But, but I guarantee you that there will be a lot of things that happen when they get over there that are not what they thought would happen. And, and they're going to think maybe that they're going to do this. And God's going to say, well, I want you to do this or this and this. Every time I've taken groups on mission trips, I, we say, hey, this is what we're, our plan is. 
Um, but there's going to be something that happens that we wasn't quite what we planned. And so we just need to be ready for that. They're stepping out on faith. They're making that commitment to say, we, we don't have it all figured out. We don't even have all the finances figured out, but we're stepping out. Okay, that's what faith's all about. Some of you have some unfinished business or business with God that you, you've just never really started. You couldn't get yourself to do it. Some things that you know that you, you want God wants you to do, but for whatever reason it hasn't happened. Maybe you've been waiting for all the details. Here's the thing. God doesn't usually give you four, five, and six until you're willing to do one, two, and three. Okay? It's just, it's just the way God works. So get ready to start doing one, two, and three. Here's the point. The way to get started is to quit thinking and just start doing. The way to get started is to quit thinking and just start doing. Whatever assignment that God has laid on your heart, it's time to quit thinking about it, quit talking about it, and just start doing it. It's time to stand up and step out on faith and let God use you. It probably won't go perfectly. Just, just t- tell them the truth. You, you'll probably make some mistakes. But who cares? Okay, just be willing to put yourself out there and move on. Well, what what if I talk to somebody about Jesus and they they don't receive it well? It's okay. That's on them. You've done your part. Your job is to follow through with the things that God has put on your heart. Earlier, I asked you guys to start thinking about, okay, what, what is the unfinished business you have with God? And so here's what I'd like you to do. In front of you are some cards that that say my unfinished business with God. I think it's kind of a yellowish card in the seats. And uh, if you want to grab those. So on the top it says un- unstarted or unfinished business for God. And then it says uh, on the bottom my plan to get going. Okay. What, what's your action step? It might be as simple as I'm, I'm going to make a phone call this week to somebody. Or, or I'm going to, you know, whatever it might be. Look for your action step. And so I want you to take those cards. If you know right now what it is to, to write in there, you can do that. If you need to take it home and pray about it. Um, but what is it you're supposed to do? Is there something, someone you're supposed to reach out to? Is there there's something you're supposed to do? Is there something you're supposed to give Is there something you're supposed to start? Uh, Is there appreciation you're uh, supposed to show? Is there an apology you're supposed to give? Is there forgiveness you're supposed to start? Is there a job you're supposed to do? There's so many things. What is it that God's putting in your heart? Some of you are still going to want all the details. Okay, right? Just you're going to fight it. But just remember the details that God gave the, the Jewish people here. Go up on the mountain, cut down the timber, build my house. That's it. That's all I gave them. He's going to take care of the rest. You can do this. The time is now. It's time to take the hard right instead of the easy wrong. I want to pray for you guys right now because there is something holding you back from doing whatever it is or you would have already done it. And so uh, I want to pray um, for those barriers. So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, it's so easy to hide behind uh, different things that come up in our lives. And the obstacles. And and, uh, we try to say, oh, it must not be supposed to happen this way. And... Sometimes we need to just stand up and say, okay, we're going to get God involved and have you help us overcome these things. So whatever it is that you've put on people's hearts that they need to do, they need to step up and and finish or start. I pray that you'll give them the strength to do that, Lord. The boldness to do that, the excitement, whatever it is that you just press on our hearts that we'll be willing to get out of our comfort zones and, and uh, serve you. Help us to trust you for the details 
And we thank you that you, you have the details figured out. We love you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen.